Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the Osprey Farpoint 40 liter backpack. So I've had this pack for several years now and lived out of it for over a year and a half while backpacking around Asia and working in Australia. So I'm very familiar with the pack and can give it a knowledgeable review based on my personal experience with it. The logo is normally here for Osprey. However, I have put some patches on it um, a while back and now they're on there forever. So ignore that. But the Osprey 4.40 liter backpack. I will be touching on some of my favorite features of the pack. I'll be giving you a size comparison, giving you an idea of what climates I have traveled in with it and just the overall benefits of choosing this as your pack for travel. Two main reasons why I love this backpack are one, the fact that it is front loading, which basically just means it opens like a carry-on suitcase, like a clamshell versus top loading where you have to go into it. That makes a huge difference, but I'll touch on more of that in a minute. The other reason I love it is the size, the fact that it is carry-on acceptable in most airlines makes a huge difference for me. I do not like checking bags. It's an extra cost that I many times do not want to pay. There's also the possibility of lost luggage as well as just the ease of le leaving the airport. I mean, you get off the plane and you walk straight out of the airport after going through customs. It's no waiting for your luggage. It's no, um, yeah, following the huge queue of people. It's just, it's for me, it means a lot to be able to just have my things constantly with me, not losing them, not paying money, walking right out of the airport once I land. So those are the two main reasons that I love this backpack, but there's many reasons to love about it, as you will see. So to start with uh, the size comparison, 40 liter backpack, I, have grabbed a roll of toilet paper um, <laughs> because that's a universal size, right? Just an easy way to identify. I know that I've watched YouTube videos in the past trying to decide which backpack I would buy and it was always hard to gauge what the actual size of that was. So hopefully this helps. If not, oh well. There is um, the front angle of it as well as the side. So, and this is a thicker ply, but as far as the height goes, as, um, the width is bigger, but the height is the same here. So maybe you'll find that helpful. <laughs> um, and then also I uh, will throw this on just so you can get a look at how it fits on me. I am 5'5 and around 130 pounds at the moment. Uh, so I'll toss it on and let you get an idea. So this is the pack. And what it looks like when thrown on. You have the hip belt. As well as the sternum strap. which in my opinion, you can't have a backpack without those two factors. They completely change the, the load of it. And it's very simple to cinch up, to loosen. You just unhook. And very simple to adjust, so. You're going to be throwing it on and off, whether you're running through the airport, catching a bus, moving from a different hostel. It is very essential to have these straps and I love that it is quick and easy access to it. Um, the straps, shoulder straps are also very comfortable. They're, all the stitching on this backpack is very well done. Um, I've thrown it around, I've used it as a a chair while waiting in bus terminals and airports. I've um, really beat it up and it's in great condition. The straps are thick enough 
to give you that good support while not too thin, where it's just yanking on your shoulder and hurting and leaving marks. So I really think that the, the material and the stitching is just very well done on this backpack as well. And now for some external features of the pack. One thing I really like are the lockable zippers, which just means there is a hole through them, so you are able to place a small travel lock through it and just give it a little bit more security and peace of mind. Now typically locks for luggage aren't that strong anyways, and if someone really wants to break in, they will. But it's an added deterrent, and a thief will likely try someone else's backpack before yours if they see the locks. And so if you are staying in hostels where they don't have lockers for your pack, or perhaps they're too small for your pack, it's just a nice thing to have. Or if you're checking your luggage, it can give you a bit of added security as well while you're flying. And the zippers are also very well made. They're very strong. I have absolutely stuffed this pack and the zippers are as solid as ever and glide smoothly like I just bought it yesterday. So very well made zippers and the lockable zippers is a nice touch as well. And now for the back. One feature that people seem to really like about this backpack is that its shoulder straps can tuck away. There is a little sheet that rolls. It is attached to the backpack and it just rolls out from the bottom. And you can tuck these straps in and then zip this compartment up and the straps are tucked away. So if you are checking your backpack a lot and don't want to damage the straps or the possibility of them getting caught in a conveyor belt or what have you. It just packs up so, uh, to a nice seamless, seamless, and then you just unzip it, roll it back up, tuck it back in with the Velcro, and you're good to start walking around with the pack on your back again. I honestly didn't use this feature very much, however other people enjoyed it. So another exterior feature is the handles you have on the top and the side. In case you wanted to carry it like a duffel bag, the stitching is very well done. I've honestly rarely used it, but that's a feature. And you have these mesh pockets as well to slip something in. I don't use it that often, to be honest, and when your pack is very full, there's very little room. However, you can stick maybe some laundry that's drying or a slip of paper if you want some quick access to something when you're moving through the airports. And the last feature um, is the compression straps, which is fantastic to have, um, even if you're just cinching it in a little bit. So these straps, you loosen them or tighten them as needed, depending on how much you have squeezed into your backpack. But they just clip in, and that is how the backpack looks before I have used the compression straps. And to cinch them up, you just tug, and it gets a lot more um, compact so you can really get away with getting it in um, perhaps a carry-on if it was not compressed would be a bit bulky but if you can really cinch those in it will appear smaller and be smaller in size so you have this top pocket which is of decent size I can fit my hand into it comes down to about there um, it's great for easy access to a phone or passport if that is what you're using it for through the airports. I like to keep some random bips and bobs of, in my backpack that I might be grabbing fairly often and don't want to open the main pack. And now for the second layer of pockets. I apologize about the change in lighting. I completely forgot to film this section, so I had to go back and do it but you have an inside pocket here, the outer layer, which goes down to the very bottom of the pack. 
and then you have a zippered area which goes almost down to the bottom of the pack as well and you have another sleeve there which you could place a computer in I would never do that but I throw my pack around a lot so that is the inside pocket area And now for the inside. By far my most favorite feature of this backpack is the fact that it is front loading or in other words has a clamshell design. Typically people are able to only access their things from the top of the pack um, but this allows you to open it like a suitcase giving you easy access to everything you want in your pack and allowing you to be more organized in the process. There's a top zipper here where you can stow things and I have a lot of things in this pack, but the main compartment. So it lacks a lot of pockets, um, but you can always use packing cubes for that because for me, a lot of people have sacrificed either the size or different designs or having more compartments in a backpack, but it is top loading and front loading where it opens like a suitcase is not worth the sacrifice. I would always choose a front loading over the others. I've watched many people grumble and curse as they're digging through their backpack looking for something that could have easily been found had they had a front loading backpack. And going through that process daily really starts to become a nuisance. So I'm just going to continue loading up the backpack so you can see, uh, get an idea of what it can fit in there and I could fit a lot more in here um, but just throwing in some things so you have a better idea but yes 40 liters um, packing cubes are great for more organization I usually have a packing cube with electronics one with some lingerie socks and perhaps some other with some clothes I don't use that often so to sum up this backpack I think it's the perfect size for world travel it's big enough to fit all the essentials while small enough to bring on the plane as a carry-on. Cutting costs and possibility of lost luggage, not to mention it's a lot faster getting through airports. It also means you won't be hauling around a huge oversized pack in your destination country or having to cram it in your foot space on a bus. It's perfect for traveling in hostels and in warm weather. The countries I've been to with this backpack so far are Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Laos, Vietnam, Australia, India, and Nepal for a combined travel of 20 consecutive months living full time out of my backpack. If you're going somewhere cold and need a lot of warm weather clothing that takes up a lot of space, you might want something bigger. However, I honestly think this size is perfect. You're gonna be doing laundry anyways if you're traveling for a while. And I managed to fit everything that I needed in this backpack for over a year and a half of travel. So that's my review, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.